Hello. So, kind of had a shocking day today. This is uh, the artwork of uh, Nicholas Frizzolone. I hope I didn't mispronounce your name there, Nicholas. I'm sure I might have. And uh, also, greetings to your friend, Mr. David Sipola. I hope to meet you both someday. Um, I'm going to give you a link below to his website where he sells his beautiful uh, prints and paintings and artwork, as well as his uh, Instagram. There's him right there. And uh, some of his... Uh, I mean, that's just beautiful. Anyway, uh, I was first introduced to him because he's a big fan of my uh, Fuel Theory videos. And um, he actually... Uh, I was really shocked. I'm going to tell you what he did. He sent me uh, two of his... Uh, who is pieces of artwork. One was of me, and and it looks exactly like me. <laughs> you can't see this. Uh, you will be able to see it on Instagram. You'll see this print and be able to zoom in. He actually has the golden ratio um, as expressed um, by the golden spiral as typically found in the Nautilus shell as well as the dodecahedron. And uh, this is uh, his artwork. I'm going to actually stick this in a spare frame that I have. And uh, I'll give you the Instagram, his Instagram, below where you can actually see a close-up of it. Um, it's incredible. It does look just like me, which is... <laughs> I know what I look like, by the way, yeah. Um, but all the detail, I mean, I, I, uh, it, this is great. This is great. And I was actually looking through his artwork while I was in Florida. And thank you, David. Uh, uh, Nicholas, excuse me. I was mentioning your your buddy David. Excuse me. Thank you, Nicholas, uh, for uh, sending this to me. Um, it's incredible. He has a, a fond, as any artist artist should, has a, a fond interest in uh, in the uh, the golden sector, golden ratio. Of course, these things and sayings. I'm going to talk about that in a second. These sayings, like golden ratio and sacred geometry, are meaningless of themselves because human beings are unable to define them. And I'm not referring to Nicholas because that is expressed within himself as uh, as uh, brought forth uh, in his artwork. But when you say golden ratio or uh, sacred geometry, all these things which are completely meaningless sayings, to give definition to them is to actually to give power to uh, the manifestation of wisdom to what they refer to. I mentioned in looking through his website and his other beautiful artwork, which I really loved, that there was one that I really loved because it's a true metaphysical. And this is the reason why Plato didn't like art for the sake of art because it was both the means and ends. Uh, artwork was uh, the symbolism of metaphysics and in which case uh, there are things that are inexpressible and they're meant to be self-reflective to uh, impose comprehension as metaphysical symbolism or true ancient art is meant to be. It's not that Plato or the Pythagoreans were against art. They were against art for simply the sake of showing art. It was meant to uh, be a mirror, and you could talk about this endlessly in art theory, true art theory from the perspective of ancient art and how true hardcore um, early culture art was meant to be as metaphysical symbolisms for being a mirror into comprehension and understanding of cosmic mechanics, both uh, existential and uh, metaphysical, specifically also metaphysical, since everything as above, so below. But we have the incorrect fallacy of uh, therefore as below, so so as above, as the inverse fallacy of identification, but that's something else. Um, and he sent me this framed, and it's just a beautiful, I mean, all of his work is incredible, but this is, this actually says a lot. This is, to me, whatever you think of the uh, the type of artwork, whether it be medium or whether it be watercolor or drawing or oils or whatnot, the metaphysical symbolism of this actually struck me, and it's just so exquisite on so many levels. And I really wanted to say, uh, you know, incredible thanks to uh, Nicholas. And uh, like I said, I've got the link to his website below, which is nicholasfrizzoloni.com, and uh, also I'll have post his uh, Instagram below. This is incredible, Nicholas. Really is. I'm actually going to hang this beside my bed, if that's okay with you. Um, uh, this is also, uh, I think this image is also on his Instagram page, but we have the, uh, we have uh, the two selves, and the two selves is prevalent within all forms of ancient Indian uh, and Greek metaphysics. There's the existential self, the Namarupaka, or the psychophysical self, or in the ancient Pali, Rupa Vedana Sana Sankara Vinyana, or the, uh, or the Kaya. 
And this, of course, is the repeated phrase to which is uh, the most often repeated phrase in ancient Pali, which I'm a translator, which is of the psychophysical self, is uh, said, uh, nami sata. This is not my true self or not my soul. Uh, this is the reflexive uh, existential self to which one is meant to disobjectify from. This is what retroduction, the via negativa, apophaticism, and... Um, and uh, Netty, netty, uh, hardcore monistic metaphysics is meant to do is to disobjectify. Meditation, of course, is truly a meaningless term. Meditation doesn't refer to anything denotatively. It's a, a completely stupid word which does not portray content. It's a fluff term. Um, in original meaning, it is uh, smriti or sati, not uh, existential recollection, but ontological recollection through objective negation. And uh, that that beautiful piece of artwork from Nicholas is very representative of that. Um, in his uh, artwork, both there and many of his other pieces, but specifically also the drawing of me, where he sticks in the golden spiral and ratio and the dodecahedron, he's the, found uh, the golden ratio. But getting people to actually explain what it is, not, nobody has the answer. Uh, there is a secret found in Plato's Republic 509D to 511. I'm going to use these cards to illustrate it's the divided line section. You draw a line, okay, and then you split that line unevenly. So I was like, okay, there we go. We split it unevenly. Now you take each one of those sections and you divide it unevenly. So it's like, okay, we you divide it unevenly. And what you'll end up with, now the line is in four sections. What you end up with is phi, one, one, and one over phi. Together, these form phi cubed, phi or phi to the power of 3, which is 4.23606. But the expression of the line as against the self in totality, which is phi cubed, is the expression 1 over phi to the power of negative 3. 1 over phi to the power of negative 3 will manifest phi cubed. What this means is, since it's a mathematical absolute, and this is the short explanation, if you could call it that, of the explanation of the golden section, is that phi is the 1 as 1 is the phi. That's an actual mathematical certainty. This is where I'll actually engage math and say, you know, this is where math is true. You tell any mathematicians, like, well, phi is the 1 as 1 is the phi. Like, yeah, so what? Who cares? Well, they can't connect the dots. This means is that everything people call the golden ratio, the golden section, is literally the, uh, the uh, multi-mirrored manifestation of phi, or we can call it the Fibonacci sequence, 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, on and on and on, where we end up with complexity or the actual manifestation of one or principle. In ancient Greek, one is not a number. One is principle. So one against the self, there's nothing without the most, the most fundamental thing. The ancient, this is actually truly in the ancient uh, Neoplatonic and Platonic texts, the actual secret of secrets of the Pythagoreans is the Eoristostaios, which actually I translated every occurrence of Eoristostaios, the ancient Greek works. This is the indefinite dyad, the uh, unmanifest attribute. What this actually means is that everything has at least one attribute. The attribute of one is itself the golden section, the golden ratio. And we're talking about principle and attribute, and this would be 1 over 5 to the power of negative 3, or 0 0.23606, where we end up with totality and expression. If I actually where I had a large piece of paper, I'd actually be able to draw out perfectly the spiral there. But this is also the Pythagorean triangle, which is also a tattoo to my hand. Let's take a look at this for a second. This is for the sake of Nick and uh, David Sipola. This is the Pythagorean triangle with an angle of 108 and 36 and 36. And here we have 1, 1, and phi as base. So 1, 1, phi is isosceles triangle. And of course, up here is the unmanifest principle. Of course, down here we have the golden ratio of phi, 1.618, 033, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Down here, in perfect incommensurability, you notice it didn't go straight down. It went down at this angle. We have the remanifestation of this again. And this, of course, would be like a fractal. Repeating fractal, we have now a base of 1, 1, excuse me, a uh, a uh, a top split, a 1-1 one, one base of phi. This is where 1 and phi are exactly the same thing. By the way, this makes up this particular specific triangle of 108, 36, 36 with 1-1 one, one and phi, which is also tattooed right here on my hand, makes up the basis of the most famous Pythagorean triangle as manifest three ways. And that 
Pythagorean triangle is this. This is the Pythagorean pentagram. By the way, also too, if we take a look at this, the basis for all life in the universe, interestingly enough, the literal sacred, the one and only sacred Pythagorean triangle, the 108, 36, 36 with 1, 1, and phi as base, is also oxygen molecule right here, hydrogen molecule here, hydrogen molecule here. Here we have H2O, the basis for all life. So the sacred Pythagorean triangle within which, and this is the only triangle in the universe that contains absolute incommensurability, and I could talk about this for hours and hours and hours, bore the hell out of you until you fall out of your chair dead, is also the exact same geometry for the structure of the only molecule which gives life to dust. In other words, is you know the necessary component for life, that being water, literally the oxygen molecule, the hydrogen, the hydrogen. This is the geometry of water, by the way. Coincidence? Absolutely impossible. Um, the golden ratio and the so-called sacred geometry are not golden, and calling them sacred is only meant that they contain within themselves the perfect incommensurability and the basis of life, and uh, that incommensurability, or the Aoristos Dias, is the great secret of the Pythagoreans. Um, Explaining that takes a really long time, however, but it's ultimately a divine, divinely simple uh, principle, and what it is is that the principle weighed against itself by itself. Kind of like nothing is without an attribute, like light and illumination, water and wetness, the attribute of the one, or the agathon in ancient Greek, is the Aoristos Dias. In ancient Greek, this is also called a goddess, Ananke. Let me actually write that out for you. Of course, not literally a goddess, but uh, I'm going to run out of room to write here. Uh, you can look this up too. Ananke. This literally means the divine attributes, or the one against itself, or the nature of light is illumination. The nature of good is to do good, so principle and attribute are one and the same thing. This is why there's uh, no first cause or original sin in hardcore Pythagorean Platonic monism, because cause is impl implicative of something separate from principle and that's not the case but this is the Aoristos Dias, sort of the indefinite principle as the basis for what human beings conventionally call the golden ratio or the golden section this is the only true uh, incommensurability in the universe and that's why that Pythagorean triangle is literally the sacred Pythagorean triangle and uh, all of this is connected to everything else. Everything in the universe is tied together. This is the true metaphysical art. That, uh, that's why I, I see a lot of artwork. And you know, I'm not enamored because I am. That you, <laughs> you did this uh, of me. But uh, also that you have that eye for that. Uh, I think very few people do. It's, uh, it's one of those things that's only manifest in a rare people. There are people that do famous artwork and I'm not talking about what's his face who's now dead with the fuzzy hair that you know did the beautiful landscape paintings, but people are like a thousand times better than him. It's like, yeah, but all they're doing is they're making contrivances in their mind, and then they're manifesting that to make you know beautiful images. And I think your images are not only beautiful, but you know there is there is there's a lot of different forms of art. We can start to talk about art theory endlessly, which I certainly can and would love to do. But the point being is that there's a noble type of art, there's a refined type of art, but which is profane. It's like you take the most beautiful landscape, but itself, well, beautiful is empty. It's kind of like eating or looking at like a cupcake covered in caramel and sprinkles. It's, it's beautiful and it tastes well, but it will make you sick and it's empty. Yours, your artwork, is true and fundamental like a foundation because it reflects, it is self-reflexive of the metaphysical artwork of the ancients where artwork was meant not to be some kind of eye candy that you go, ooh, not that that's a bad thing, but uh, that was uh, manifested uh, a nobler spirit of comprehension. It was meant to be a reflexive mirror of seeing the face behind the face where the true self behind the existential self you see in the mirror, the psychophysical corporeal self. And your artwork is of that noble type. 
And I don't say that because you sent me... I love this piece, by the way. I had no idea you were going to send it to me. I said, this is my favorite piece. And I, I didn't say that thinking you were going to send it to me. I absolutely love it. I love it. I love staring at it. I actually stared at it today for like a half an hour. I'm not, I'm not going to say I, I cried because if I did, then everybody would make fun of me, but I actually did. And that's actually truthful. I love stuff like this. I really want to thank you, Nicholas. You're an incredible person. And I'm sorry I sound kind of tired. This is because I was up to like 5.30 in the morning last night and my mother had uh, uh, knee surgery and I was over there helping her today. She has been, her knee's been killing her and she had her knee cut out and uh, put in a stainless knee. And so I'm kind of frazzled at both ends, but uh, I want to show you, you know, my great appreciation for uh, what you've done. But not only what you've done, but what you are. And I suggest anybody to check, check out uh, your website and your Instagram, which I'm going to post links to below. below. And, uh, you know, maybe drop you a donation or uh, buy a piece of your artwork. This is, you went out of your way to frame this and send it to me. And uh, it's beautiful. Um, and I'm, you know, I don't hang many pieces because the pieces that I want to hang that like can be bought are, are, you know, they're impossible because they're like hardcore artwork that's thousands of years old hanging in some museum. Obviously, I can't possess that. I guess I could print out a reproduction of it, but uh, yours is of a completely different type. And uh, that's a good thing. It's of the type that I actually give appreciation. Well, yours is actually the type of artwork that the Platonists in the uh, the, uh, the Neoplatonists, uh, Plotinus, Proclus, Numenius, Albinus, Syrianus, Demetius. The, the, yours is the type of... I mean, that is the true type of artwork that is absolutely transcendent. There's a lot of artwork today, like if you took it back like 3,000 years ago to ancient Greek, they would, they would say if they spoke English, they'd be like, what the, what the F is this? Stuff like this, if you could take a piece of artwork, like what you've done here, key point, pause for it. Take your artwork, take it a time machine, take it back to ancient Greek. Just walk in silently to some you know, some uh, Platonic philosophers and just like prop it up and just hold it and let them look at it. Instant comprehension. That is something that's important. That is something you won't read about in any book on art history and art philosophy. That is a really key point. That is called transcendent ontological slash metaphysical art. This is what to me, is true art. I'm not saying that other types of art aren't art. They are. But there's a nobler type of art. And yours is that. Lux Veritas. A little bit of Latin there. I had several years of Latin. I've forgotten a lot of my Latin. <laughs> there's too much Greek swarming around up in my brain. That and Polly, too. I used to translate so much Polly, I'd actually dream in Polly, which is an ancient dead... Uh, Indo-Aryan Prakrit language, really dead language, and that is like weird. When you're having dreams in an ancient dead language, people haven't spoken in eons, then you are a freak! <laughs> Thank you, Nicholas. Thank you. Love it.